League Super Bowl is unique, but Super Bowl 55 certain to be uh, really like none before it. And in at least one sense, hopefully like none to ever happen again. Bill Benner has more in this week's Inside Indiana Sports. Bill. Thanks, Gary. For the first time ever, a team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, will have home field advantage, but with only slightly more than 20,000 fans in attendance because of COVID restrictions, that advantage is somewhat negated. Joining us now to offer his perspective as a veteran of multiple Super Bowls who has been in the middle of the pregame activities all week in Tampa and our friend from broadcast partner, Wish TV Sports Director, Anthony Calhoun, Calhoun and AC. Thanks for making time for us. You look great down there in Florida. Thanks, Bill. Always great to be with you, my friend. And as you mentioned, it is beautiful here in Tampa, and we can't wait for Super Bowl 55, my man. Well, we're going to talk about Super Bowl 55, but first, let's talk about breaking news because you broke it on Thursday morning when you revealed that the Big Ten men's basketball tournament will add to our March Madness uh, uh, by relocating from Chicago to Lucas Oil Stadium. That's uh, another incredible coup for the city of Indianapolis. Yeah, it is. And, you know, when I got the news or some sources that this was going to happen and take place in our great city, I, I was thrilled because, I mean, you know how tough it's been with the economy and just trying to get big events to Indianapolis. And we lost so much last year because of the pandemic. And to get word earlier in the week here that it was going to happen was just great news to be report uh, to the folks in Indianapolis. But here we are. The men's NCAA tournament going to take place, obviously, here in Indianapolis. And then now you've got the Big Ten men's tournament, and it's going to be great. They'll play at Lucas Oil Stadium. That's what I'm hearing. That's what they're hoping to play because the ladies are already in town playing at Bankers Life Fieldhouse. So it is going to be a fun week of Big Ten basketball in Indianapolis. And then think about that. you got that week of action, and then you got three more weeks of college basketball right in the Hoosier State it is going to be just a tremendous um, month for folks who love basketball. Well, AC, let's talk about the, the Super Bowl. Again, you've been down there all week. Uh, it has to be just a, a, a surreal kind of Super Bowl environment, uh, given everything that's going on elsewhere in the, in the world with COVID. Yeah. Yeah, Bill, you know, that's a great question because it is um, it is very just different, just strange uh, this year. You know, I've covered many Super Bowls and um, – I tell you one thing that grabbed my attention. And usually, this place they'll, they'll credit, um, they'll give out about five thousand uh, credentials to the media. Uh, not the case at all this year. I mean, when we checked in early in the week, I mean, they maybe had ten media members ahead of us. That's it. Myself and our photographer uh, is very different, very COVID nineteen driven. Obviously, uh, when you're not on television, for the most part, um, you have to have your mask on uh, every time. I'm checking in for some uh, going to an events or or even going to any type of setting up for virtual press conferences. You have to have your mask on. We get a COVID nineteen screening all the time as well. Um, but I will say this though. Just talking to the host committee down here, uh, even though it's tough for them right now, as far as, you know, uh, a Super Bowl, like unlike any other, but they're grateful that they have just some business in general. I mean, that their hotel rooms are taken up. You know, usually it's about 86 filled to capacity during the Super Bowl around this time, like early in the week. It's only 53% filled right now. But at the end of the day, they're happy they have bodies in there. They can make some type of money to bring into this economy here from Super Bowl 55. AC, just a, a, a little less than a minute ago, we got to talk about the Colts. Yeah. A very fluid situation yeah. with quarterback. Rumors floating around that Andrew Lack's coming back. Certainly, Matthew Stanford has already announced his decision to go to the L.A. Rams. Yeah. Uh, are you hearing anything down in Tampa uh, in the middle of the NFL environment? You know, I heard all those Andrew Luck rumors early in the week, uh, which we know those are not true. But uh, it would be nice if Andrew decided to come back when we like that. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. You know, there's been a lot of talk to Bill that Carson Wentz from Philadelphia, that he's that the Eagles apparently are listening to possibly trade opportunities for him. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing him come to Indy. I mean, he's got a great relationship, of course, with Frank Reich. Uh, he played his best football with Frank Reich when he was with the Eagles. So I wouldn't mind that at all. You got Darnold as well with the Jets. Um, we'll see what happens. But one thing we know for sure, um, they're going to have to get a mobile quarterback, a guy who can not only just throw the football, obviously, but is able to move around as well. Because with the line that that quarterback's going to have and the protection that he gets and then the wide receivers, 
Um, whoever comes in here is going to be successful, my man. Well, Anthony, certainly uh, we enjoy uh, your coverage this week from uh, Tampa. We wish you the best. Have a safe trip home, and we'll see you soon, my friend. Thank you. Uh, hey, Bill, real quick, I'm going with, don't get mad at me, I'm going with the Bucks. I think the Bucks are going to win. I think Tom gets number seven. Oh, man. Sorry. Oh, man. That's hard to say <laughs> here in Indianapolis. AC, thanks. Yeah. No problem. Uh, Gary, back to you. All right, Bill.